So a marine protected area um, can be a lot of different things. Um, some at one end of the spectrum, it's it's a very protected area, like a like a wilderness area we would think of, where you're not allowed to do commercial fishing, you're not allowed to do mining. It's it's an area that is really being managed for biodiversity and for its um, kind of its conservation um, purposes. At the other end of a marine protected area could be one that might just limit the most damaging of activities. You could imagine an area that would be off limits to oil drilling. Mm. Um, the example here in the United States is we have a National Marine Sanctuaries Program. And by and large, under the Sanctuaries Program, it restricts the amount of oil and gas development that can happen in these areas, and they call that a sanctuary. Um, most of the sanctuaries in the United States, believe it or not, don't actually have particularly um, different controls on fishing activity. That's not just what is done in the United States in our sanctuary system, but in other countries, when they say that when they use that term marine protected area, um, it means some place that is would be strongly protected where you would not have uh, commercial extractive activities. Um, the planet, the, the, the um, a group called the Convention on Biological Diversity established a goal that by the year 2020, uh, we would have 10% of the planet in a protected area. And all governments around the world who are part of that treaty convention are working to get to that milestone of 10%. But what you find is there's a big difference in what one country thinks of as a protected area versus another. And that's one of the challenges we face in our work today. Um, my organization, we tend to support uh, protected areas that are on the, the stronger side of the spectrum, um, fe feeling that, and the science shows this, that the stronger the protection, the better the ecological and biodiversity benefits that you get from it.